In this third episode of Circuit Sessions, we are checking out the Brown Amplification T4, the Boss GE7 modded by Analog Man, and finally the Jam Pedals Ripley 4. Let's start with the Brown Amplification T4. Now this is a Big Muff type pedal. I believe the T4 stands for four transistors, which is a specific type of Big Muff. I can't remember what it is. I would may maybe put that in in the edit. But Big Muffs have always been a type of fuzz, as a fuzz lover, a type of fuzz that has been at the bottom of the my pile. Never quite enjoyed the way that it scoops out a load of your mid-range, which is kind of what I build a lot of my tone on, is the mid-range. The T4 is slightly, is slightly different, and I believe part of the design philosophy was to smoothen out that mid-range a little more, make that drop off, that scoop a little less prominent. Now it is still very big muffy and there is still a scoop there, but I've just found it to be a little more pleasing to play. So let's get on with some tones. Today we're playing this Baum Guitars Vega series Carve with two really cool P90s in this gorgeous, I think it's glacier blue, it's got a nice fleck in there, a nice sparkle. Into this little pedal board with these three pedals on, it has got a Strymon flint on but we're not going to be using that. Into the black Star Amped 1, which I have set up kind of Fender Twinny. My clean sound is... And the Brown Amps T4. So that's unmistakably big muff territory. But as you can hear, that mid scoop is still there, but it's not quite as prominent as I've found with other big muffs. And I've also found with this, it hasn't got such a boomy bottom end. It has a bit more tightness down there. Lower gain tones is where you get the mid-range, and as you turn it up, it's bringing up the high and low frequencies up around that mid-range, if you know what I mean. So let's try that out. Let's crank it up a bit. So you're getting into the more classic Big Muff territories there. Huge bottom end starts to bring it out. Interesting. Big Muff still aren't where I'm at when it comes to fuzz. To me, it almost sounds like the first version of some of those 90s Mesa Boogie tones. You know, it's a, a load of bottom end, a load of top end, and not much in the middle. And that's sort of my impression on Big Muffs. This is the best that I've found, or at least the closest to how I like my guitar tone to be, which sort of brings us on to the next pedal. This is the Boss GE7, but I managed to get this one modded by Analog Man when I ordered my King of Tone. And this pedal has been a massive learning curve for me because I don't, I admit to not really knowing what different frequencies are, like, you know, 2.7K or 1K or 100 Hertz. You know, I don't really know what that sounds like if someone says that to me. But having an EQ pedal like this almost forces you to do that. What I do want to experiment with is if we can change the tone of the T4 to be closer to where I like it, maybe bring back some of the mid-range. But first I'm going to go over my approach to this EQ pedal that might help you if you are thinking about picking one up because it is now a really essential pedal for especially my live board. Now the way I approached it is first use it as a simple clean boost. So what I did is I flattened all the EQ out and bumped up the level just a tiny bit, which takes us from something like this. Mm -hmm. 
So it is essentially by nature the most transparent clean boost that you can get because you're flat, you've got a flat EQ, you are just literally boosting the level. And I found that a useful place to start with this, even though it's relatively boring. Next, I started to think about what else I want when I'm going for a solo or a lead break and that is possibly a little less low end. What I did find when learning this pedal and learning how to adjust my EQ is that the tiniest little adjustments make quite a big difference. There's no need to go to the maximum or minimum settings of these EQ parameters. The powerful stuff is in the little micro movement. So next, as I said, I would scoop a little bit at the bottom end. <laughs> really tamed up this neck pickup on this guitar nicely this neck p90 seems to have quite a boomy bottom end just rolling off that little bit on the bottom has really helped that out so next i when i was thinking about my lead tone what else i might want from it is a little tiny bump in the mid-range to cut through a band mix now this is going to depend on what band you're in and what other frequencies been taking up whether there's another guitar player for example <laughs> solo boost for me that is now pretty much where I use this pedal 100% of the time it's become really important for me to have one of these on a board now what I wanted to experiment with is combining that with a fuzz the T4 before it that maybe I wanted to change the EQ curve of so let's go with that let's flatten things out for now let's turn on the T4 I'll turn on the boss uh, GE7 completely flat so we can hear how transparent it is as well <laughs> Now I'm going to start with adjusting that mid range, see if we can bring a bit more up. So let's go, let's go about 801.6 where we were before and maybe a bit around it as well to smooth it off. Okay, that's completely changed things for me. That sounds really good in my opinion. It still has a little flavor of the Big Muff, but it's brought the EQ somewhere closer to where I want it to be. I think the biggest tip I can give you at this point is to just use your ears. And I think that's a really, really cool tone there, the Big Muff and the EQ bringing those mids back. Okay, let's move on to the next pedal. Now this is the Jam Pedals Ripley Fall. It is two of their pedals in one, the Ripple, and the waterfall. The ripple is the phaser, and if I'm not mistaken, it is a two-stage phaser, which isn't quite traditional. I think usually you get a four-stage or an eight-stage. Two-stage means that it's a little bit closer to a univibe sound, and I've really, really come to like the phaser in this pedal. Pretty simple really, that side of the pedal just has this one speed knob and it can go from super slow to super fast and pulsing. The chorus side is again very simple, we have a speed, depth and two switches. One switch switches between a chorus and vibrato, with the vibrato it basically takes out the dry signal. And then the plus minus switch essentially changes the intensity of the waveform. Thank you. 
mm-hmm. that the waveform is more square wave than I was expecting. It's not quite straight s- square wave, but it is much more up and down than I was expecting it to be for a luscious sounding chorus. In my mind, I always think of them to be triangle wave or sine wave, but this is much more closer to a square wave, I would say. You will have noticed when I use the foot switch in the middle, the speed greatly increased. Uh, it's a speed foot switch that I think actually triples the set speed that you have. And this is probably my only gripe with this pedal. I wish that it was a double speed instead of a triple. It feels like wherever you are, triple just seems too fast, almost unusable. I'd much rather it be a double, and then it sort of gets closer to a Leslie type thing. So that's quickly gone over those three pedals. Now, as you know, in this these types of videos, I like to stack them all at the end for a bit of fun. <laughs> My favourite part of these videos is coming to the end of it and combining the three of them in new ways and trying different combinations that I've not tried before because it almost always inspires me to play something new, think of a different riff, some new notes, some new chords to put together. And that's what it's all about is using this gear to inspire us to make music. Thanks guys for checking out the video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and maybe check out some more and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.